Hey guys, I'm Lauren Rosado with Comp Performance Group. Today I'm going to help you better understand quartermaster clutches because, well, clutches can be a very complicated thing. With that said, I'm going to help you select which clutch is best for you, explain MOI and torque capacity, and better educate you on some common clutch terminology. Let's get started. When selecting a clutch, you want to make sure you get the highest performance clutch possible for your specific application. On the contrary to what many believe, the best clutch isn't always the lightest, the biggest, smallest, or least or most expensive. There are a variety of factors that determine which clutch is best for your specific application. Those factors are horsepower and torque, driveline, vehicle weight, tire type, engine type, and any class or division rules. Selecting a clutch is all about compromise. Would you rather have a smaller, lighter clutch that accelerates and decelerates faster, but is more susceptible to heat buildup? Or would you rather have a larger clutch that is more durable and can sustain more abuse from heat? To make this kind of decision, it is important to understand MOI and torque capacity. Moment of inertia, or best known as MOI, is the measurement of how much energy it takes to spin an object. The heavier or larger the clutch is in diameter, the harder the clutch is to accelerate or decelerate. If two clutches are the same weight and one is half the diameter of the other, then the smaller diameter clutch will accelerate and decelerate faster with less overall energy being used. After understanding the moment of inertia, you will also need to understand torque capacity. Torque capacity for a clutch is the clutch's highest ultimate torque rating or the maximum torque that can be applied on a continual basis while still maintaining a normally expected fatigue life. Now that you have an overall knowledge on how to select the right clutch and understand MOI and torque capacity, we are now going to educate you on some common clutch terminology. The first section of the clutch is the clutch cover. This cover encases the clutch plates and includes the clutch spring. Following the clutch cover are the gas slots. They provide additional cooling to the internal clutch components. Next, there is the cover mounted ring gear, which mounts the clutch bolts. The starter drive gear engages the ring gear to crank the engine. The next portion of the clutch features friction discs, floater discs, and the pressure plate. Friction discs are made of various types of friction material that come into contact with both the flywheel and the pressure plate to create the force required to turn the transmission. Then there are floater discs. Floater discs act as an intermediate flywheel between the clutch discs. This disc sits into the notches built into the flywheel so that they can rotate as a single unit. Finally, you have the pressure plate. The pressure plate uses spring pressure to squeeze the clutch disc against the flywheel and transmit a driving force through the assembly. The plate is then drawn away from the flywheel via linkage to disengage. The flywheel is when the clutch is pressed, it utilizes friction against the clutch plate to determine the amount of force that the clutch is capable of handling. The button bolts to the flex plate to engage the starter for lighter assembly and lower the moment of inertia. Lastly, there's bell housing. Bell housing connects the engine to the transmission and houses the clutch assembly. I hope this video has helped make the decision a little bit easier to decide which clutch is best for you. For more information, visit our website below and remember to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Which clutch is best for you? For more information, visit the website. Website, why do I have that so wrong? <laughs> well, then I'll record it and you get up here and you say it. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh.